PCOS and how to deal with the PCOS patients. Not only in the reproductive age group, it is now also increasing in the adolescent age group also. Now come to what is PCOS. PCOS is a syndrome characterized by oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea and there will be laboratory evidence of hyperandrogenemia, hyperinsulinemia and on radiology in USG you can find the polycystic ovaries. Polycystic, what is polycystic ovary? As we all know that more than 12 immature follicles on USG you will find around 4 to 9 millimeter in diameter. Okay. Now, why we need to be aware about PCOS? Because the uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome is a spectrum of disorder. It starts with the only ovarian cystic problem and that uh, leads to menstrual irregularity in the female age group and that may also and that has a lot of long term sequel like uh, metabolic problems, obesity, hyperandrogenemia, hirsutism, acne and uh, there is hair loss that are the features of polycystic ovary and that leads to the lipid abnormal lipid metabolism and uh, obstructive sleep apnea and uh, endo endometrial carcinoma these are also uh, these are very much uh, dangerous long term sequel of polycystic ovary <coughs> now why <coughs> how to diagnose polycystic ovary Patient uh, in our OPD mostly comes with a complaint of irregular abnormal, irregular menstruation or amenorrhea and uh, we start to in, uh, investigate the patient and when we get that the patient has uh, some features of hirsutism or abnormal hair growth, facial hair and obesity then uh, and, uh, and so the radiology says that there is polycystic ovaries on uh, USG then we confirm the diagnosis of polycystic ovary. But according to Rotterdam criteria in, 2000, in uh, 2003, that we have to at least two out of the three criteria. Like uh, number one is features of anovulation or oligo ovulation, that is irregular menstruation. Number two is hyperclinical features of hyperandrogenism or hyperandrogenemia and uh, which will also which needs to be excluded from the other causes of hyperandrogenemia like adrenal tumor or any ovarian tumor that leads to hyperandrogenism and number three is the clinical features uh, radiological features of polycystic ovary now what are the presenting features of pcos mostly i as all, as i already said the patient may present with the amenorrhea irregular menstruation or um, mostly and the second is the reproductive age group comes with the problems of fertility because they are uh, in 30 to 40 percent of cases the patients present with the uh, problems of uh, fertility <coughs> and number three is that uh, it is not only in the reproductive age group the adolescents are also uh, seen adolescent age, adolescent age group also they are comes with the menstrual problem or the uh, uh, facial problem of hair, uh, increased hair growth, etc. Now, uh, the only the problem with the polycystic ovarian syndrome is that that in the early age group is the menstrual problem, and uh, in the latter half there is uh, cardiovascular problem or the uh, endometrial carcinoma problem, etc. So, now come to <coughs> how to manage how to manage the those patients who present with the polycystic ovary and uh, those polycystic ovarian patients ovarian syndrome patients uh, when they present it it should be like the patient according to the patient what are the symptoms in early in the reproductive age group if they come with the problem of only menstrual problem then we need to uh, uh, regularize the uh, patient uh, menstruation with the help of the ocps as we only know and those uh, OCPs will not only regularize the uh, menstruation, it will also help the patient from uh, to avoid the late sequels of many problems of lipid metabolism, etc. Because we all know OCP decreases the LH surge and that will lead to uh, good ovulation, uh, that will suppress the ovulation and that will uh, lead to uh, the uh, problems of that theca cell hypertrophy in case of polycystic ovary and um, 
if the cycle is regular, there will be menstrual uh, uh, setting, setting off and thus endometrial setting off. So there will not be excessive thickening of the endometrial wall and there will be less chance of endometrial hyperplasia and uh, the problems of endometrial carcinoma in future. And also it decreases the serum hormone binding globulin that uh, it uh, increases the SHBG and that will lead to uh, decrease of the level of the serum testosterone because it will increase, uh, it will decrease the free testosterone and that are the co main cause of increased hair growth in the uh, abnormal areas of uh, female body and that will be very much helpful for them because this is a main feature that patients comes and says that okay doctor I have a lots of uh, hair, acne etc. So the serum testosterone is decreased also in cases of uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome if treated with oral contraceptive pill. Now the main, uh, it is not that the main treatment, the first treatment of uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome should be lifestyle modification. Uh, as we all know the days are, uh, as we, uh, we are being advanced in our modern era, we are uh, avoiding the time for our body like exercise and uh, yoga uh, etc. So we do not expend our time for uh, fitness of our body. So that leads to obesity, obesity and sedentary habits leads to obesity and you, as you, we all know that if obesity is there, that is the waist circumference more than 85 centimeter and that will lead to the uh, problem of uh, increased level of androgen and androgen, increased androgen level will uh, cause the immature uh, follicles to be uh, accumulated in the ovaries and that will lead to polycystic ovary. So lifestyle modification is the, that the food habit, uh, avoiding the uh, junk food, oily food and uh, especially in Eastern India uh, where the prevalence of PCOS is almost 30% uh, in the young age group because of the we uh, some uh, days before the Times, in, Times of India said that rice is the main reason for polycystic ovarian syndrome in Eastern India because of our food, because of our food habit and uh, that will also we should in East, East India there is uh, food habit is a very uh, important thing to uh, decrease the incidence of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So uh, now uh, avoiding the oily food, carbohydrate, excessive carbohydrate and the uh, junk food that will help us to decrease the chances of polycystic ovarian syndrome in the young from the very beginning of the life from the adolescence also. Now uh, uh, come to exercise, uh, if we do at least uh, 40 minutes of moderate exercise or at least 150 minutes of uh, total exercise in a week, that will dramatically decrease the chances of polycystic ovarian syndrome or if the patient is suffering from PCOD, that will decrease the, uh, that will improve their quality of ovulation and menstrual regulation will be there. And if uh, the patient loses at least 10% or 5 to 10% of body weight, uh, by doing exercise or dietary modification, hmm, uh, they will ovulate normally. It has been seen around 40 to 40 to 50 percent of patients uh, ovulate regularly in case uh, if they do regular exercise and uh, if they uh, decrease their dietary intake uh, around uh, dietary calorie intake decrease around 30,000-500,000 kilocalories. Not only lifestyle modification, uh, now come to as I already mentioned about oral contraceptive pill for menstrual regulation and uh, there is a very important role of metformin that is the uh, drug, uh, very important drug for treatment of polycystic ovary uh, if from the fertility as well as the, from the menstrual regulation uh, treatment modality and uh, metformin around at least 500 milligram twice a day or 1000 milligram per day will uh, decrease the uh, uh, will improve the lipid metabolism as well as carbohydrate metabolism and decrease the fatty liver and that will lead to increase of the serum hormone binding globulin and uh, at least uh, and it will ultimately help from the point of menstrual problem and acne problem and hirsutism uh, now uh, from the subfertility patients subfertility patients who comes with the problem of uh, uh, ovulation and that uh, will lead to uh, the subfertility. Those patients uh, get uh, very much benefit from the metformin and also from the, uh, we know that the ovulation inducing drugs are there and uh, that will, the ovulation inducing drugs like letrozole 
uh, chloroquine, it will uh, uh, help the patient to get an uh, ovulation and that uh, ultimately leads to uh, chance, high chance of fertility in those patients. And most of the patients help, uh, are, uh, get help from the medical treatment as I already mentioned, the other drugs are also coming that in acetyl system, the uh, my yeah, that uh, decarbonacetol, etc. The other modalities of the uh, patients. Now, uh, from the, uh, the we, as we as I as a surgeon or gynecological surgeon, I will also mention the uh, role of laparoscopy in patients of polycystic ovary because uh, if uh, laparoscopic ovarian drilling is the last option. If the patient doesn't uh, ovulate by the medical treatment, then uh, it has a very good role in uh, doing in uh, cases of uh, fertile subfertile patients. Now, uh, what is the uh, long-term sequel? As I already mentioned, that uh, it increases the chances of endometrial carcinoma. There is also a psychiatric problem for a patient. If a patient, after even after their uh, medical treatment or uh, medical treatment and or Medical treatment, uh, etc. Uh, even after that, the patient doesn't respond uh, respond to the treatment, and that will uh, decrease. Uh, that will help give them the depression, and the psychiatric problems are there. Psychiatric problem in the world, in the mean of depression and uh, a lot of uh, anxiety disorder, etc. So the, in the patients are outdoor OPD of psychiatry, we even get the young patients coming with the acne problems and the uh, hirsutism uh, problem. They uh, say that, okay, I am not good looking. Uh -huh. So they become some, uh, they are suffer from some kind of depression and their million marital problem, even their uh, marital problem, their family problem, etc. If that doesn't conceive, uh, their family breaks up. So polycystic ovary starts from the adolescence and leads to a devastating consequence. So it needs a great uh, deal of treatment modalities and many treatment advances will come also in near future. Now lastly, in COVID-19 uh, uh, scenario where we, uh, we face the problem of uh, this uh, problem that the patient's lifestyle problem, like that uh, we, are, uh, we are very much uh, home quarantined. We do not uh, go outside, so the exercise, walking problem, uh, running problem, jogging, cycling, etc. is being hampered. So what to do then? Then it is uh, not that, that we cannot do uh, the outside uh, uh, games with the ch ch child's children's adolescents you know, cannot play the outside games. They do not go to the school, so they are si uh, sitting in their home and they are taking food and that is increasing the channel polycystic ovary as we are seeing now in our OPD. So uh, I suggest them that uh, in indoor, you do yoga, you do Arabic exercise, you do whatever you need to uh, burn, you have to burn your calories and that will help you to get the, get, uh, uh, the read of polycystic ovarian um, features to be uh, in, uh, and to avoid them. So after the COVID area, you may go outside and do the yoga, etc. and do the uh, exercises as you wish, but in, now at this moment you have to stay in your uh, uh, room and home and do the indoor exercises as much as possible. So this is in brief the treatment uh, and the about polycystic ovarian syndrome I have uh, told and it needs uh, very much elaboration. Thank you.